Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial. This is going to be about the observer pattern and Unity events and how to apply them as an observer pattern. So the first thing that I want to talk about is what the observer pattern and Unity events or events in general are. So I have a little beautiful drawing here. We have two examples, the non-observer pattern and the observer pattern. So in the non-observer pattern, you have two objects. Say you have your UI, and your player so whenever your player gets hit you tell the ui that your player got hit and the ui displays the health but what happens if your ui is destroyed by mistake or what happens if your player is destroyed by mistake if you were listening to the player's health change in update in the ui then you will have you will have a ton of errors and if your player tries to notify the ui then you have a ton of errors but what if what if neither of them knew about the existence of the other but they can talk to each other so basically whenever the player gets hurt the player basically screams screams hey i got hurt and then the ui listens instead of instead of it being a direct communication the ui is just listening to see if the player gets hurt so this way Neither of them know each other. They just listen and talk to no one. And if, they, if the UI listens, okay, so the player is getting hurt, I will update the health. And if the, players, the, the player would just say, hey, I'm getting hurt, that's it. They don't care if anyone is using that information, though the intention is that someone is using that information. So how do we apply that to Unity? That is very, very simple. So we, I'm going, I created a few scripts. You can see right here, they're all empty. I have a canvas set up. I have a player HUD object that has the player HUD controller, which is empty. Uh, I have a pause button. This is just you know a normal button. It has no information. And I have a text that says pause. I have an image and I have a text inside the image. These are going to, I'm going to use these to display the data from the player. So I, I also create, I, I also have to say that the image needs a source image. So I already have some images, but I will only I just use the input field or the UI sprite as a source image. And you see that it didn't change because it was already using that. But that allows me to use the image type field and then change it to horizontal. It lets me have this effect like a health bar. I'm gonna change the color to red to make it more health-like. And I'm gonna change the text here to white to make it more visible. And that's basically what I'm going to do out here. Now, inside the scripts, I'm going to open Visual Studio, and we have our event handler. So, as I said, the player needs to say something. The player needs to say, hey, I am going to, I am getting hurt. So, how does my event handler handle that? I'm going to use Unity events for that. So, we delete the mono behavior, we make this a static class, and we delete all of this. We are going to delete all of this and we're only going to be using unity engine.events. So unity events are very simple. You establish what the event is and what the type of event is, and that's basically it. So I'm going to hit say public static unity event off type int. And we're going to say player health page. So naturally there's a there's a there's a little detail here. The player health change doesn't have, I need the max health and the current health both. So we can actually use two types here to communicate whatever we need with this. And now we say equals a new that unity event. That's basically all we need. That's a defaulting. Now the player health is going to be attached to a cube that I already have in my scene down here. I will attach my player health script to my cube. It's already attached, that's good. So whenever this thing is, on, is clicked, so I'm gonna say on mouse down. Whenever this thing is clicked, I'm going to send an event that the health change. So I'm gonna have a public int current health and a public int max health. So this will allow me to show the percent health on the UI. So in order to send this event, I will go ahead and say player health changed 
or uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, event handler dot player health change. We add a question mark and then invoke, and it, it asks me for the two arguments. You can see here that it says invoke argument zero, argument one. My argument zero, I decide that it's my current health, and my argument one is my max health. Okay, that will send an event only if there's a listener somewhere. If there's no listener, this is what the question mark works for, then there's no need to send the event because no one cares, basically. Um, but of course, whenever we mouse down, I'm gonna say current health equals, I mean, I'm gonna reduce it by one, right? So I just do current health minus minus, and that will reduce the current health. And of course, in a week, we want to say that current health equals max health. Cool. With that, we, we, will, we will do something else. Like on start, to initialize the event stuff, I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to send the event to my UI or to whoever wants to listen. But now we have to add the listener in the UI. And how do we do that? Well, simple. I'm going to actually do this, make it 10. Um, there's better ways to do this, but this is the quickest one to learn. So I'm going to do using unity engine.ui. You will find the better ways yourself, I'm sure. So public, I'm going to have a public image, which is going to be my help bar. And I'm going to have a public text, which is my, you know, health text. Now, how do we listen to the event? That's very simple. The event handler, as we said, has a player health change. Here to listen to that event, we say event handler that add listener, or rather player health change that add listener, and we open parentheses. And so how do we add a listener? So it says it, 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 we need two ints in a function. So I'm gonna say on player health. This function doesn't exist yet, but I'll create it right now. I want to say private void on player health change. And I will, I will say int current health int max. Because we know that this requires two ints. Now, how do I show that in my health bar and text? That's quite simple. I will say health bar that fill amount equals current health divided by max health, right? That's, that's it. For the text, we say health text equals, that text, sorry, equals current health. Um, we say, we say current health dot to string. We add plus a little thingy plus max health dot to string. And that will show my player health. So with this, we have made an observer pattern listening to the UI health change in the UI listening to health change. So we wait a little, we have to drag and drop things as per usual. So we just play the HUD, we drag the health bar and we drag the thing. You see that it's full and it says new text. So when I hit play and in theory, this should work. So 10 out of 10, and then I click and it says nine out of 10. You say that health by disappeared because uh, this is int divided by int. So probably if I cast it to float, that's, again, that's, that's just minor. This, this is minor. Oh, let's try again. So that is basically the way the observer pattern works. I will do one more example. Yeah, there you go. So it wasn't floating. So yeah. see that zero out of 10. Of course, minus one because I didn't limit it down in the down uh, fashion. So again, what am I doing here? I'm linking my UI, my health without linking them. So this way you have your both your scripts connected, but at the same time, they are not connected. Cast is redundant, it says, I don't care. So it's wrong, it's not redundant. Um, so, okay, so the next thing that I wanna show is the pause. So I'm going to have a public game object pause. Uh, yeah, it, it's a text. I'm just going to do it here. Pause. Right? So I want to make an event that 
allows me to know when the game is paused. And of course, this event can affect many things. But my player HUD will have the button. But uh, pause. So you will ask, but Ramon, 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 why are you not just, you know, changing the HUD, the pause button? Why are you not just, you know, hitting the pause button, pause text? Oh, the pause text is something that has to be out here. Wait. So why are you not changing the bot with the button? Just toggle the pause text on and say the game is paused. Well, that is wrong because sometimes, sometimes you don't want the game to pause even if the player asks for the game to be paused. For example, you are dying. Your player is in the middle of a fight and they're going to die. So they might try to cheat and stop the fight. And maybe you don't want that to happen. Maybe you do. But this is an example where I don't want that to happen. So who or what stops the pause from happening if the player hits the button? So when the player hits the button, they will ask, hey, and I pause. And, it, and the game state manager will say, yes, you can pause. But again, if we check the observer pattern, that will be one of these asking the other directly so the right way to do it is this guy says hey can i pause and if no one replies then there's no pause but if this guy listens hey can i pause yes you can and this guy will listen yes you can okay then i pause right so then the game is paused basically this will be the button sends a request it doesn't send at an order it's not it doesn't have powers it has you know powers to ask it has figure figure of, of speed like it has a right to speak but doesn't have to write to like it's like someone voting in an election you can vote but your you know your vote counts only if everyone votes whatever i'm talking too much okay so pause button that unclick that ad listener this is common unity stuff i expect you to know this but you know this this is a thing and it's pretty nice uh so we add the listener we say event handler dot we don't have we don't have this yet so in my event handler i will create another unity event unity event and my this unity event doesn't have a type so it's just gonna say pause these are requests, so pause game request. All right, just pause request. Right, this is a new Unity event, don't forget. And here we say event handler that pause request, I'm sorry, pause request question mark that invoke, and that's it. And so we're sending the pause request. But of course, we also want to listen to the response to that. So what is the response? The response is public static unity event. Uh, this is actually the wrong name. This should be called post toggle request. So unity event, sorry, uh, unity event. And this will return a bool uh, gain or rather post toggle. It's a new unity event bool. So here we say event handler Pause double add listener and we create on pause double. Right? We're gonna create the class the same way that I created this one private void on pause doubled who pause. So why we what are we gonna do? We're gonna turn the text on or off. So we're gonna say pause text that game object that set active. And we're going to say, you know, if the game is paused, we will activate the pause text object and show the game is paused. But you, of course, will have many things to, you know, go for private bool, pause equals false, awake. So here we have to listen to the event, event handler dot pause toggle request that add listener on pause toggle requested i wanted to do this one because since this doesn't have a this doesn't have a field here we can just leave it empty so here we say paused equals not paused so we toggle the pause and we send the new event so event handler dot pause toggled question mark dot invoke pause 
So here we're toggling the pause. This is classic, but then we send in the event, and the event will be listened by the player pod, right? And it will show the thing. So we, I also have to make sure that this is turned off at the start of the game. So pause text that turned off uh, game object. Let's set active. It's false. This is just extra code. Okay. So now we have our pause functionality, quote unquote, working. Of course, I have not added my game state manager anywhere, so I need a new object managers. I didn't want to do this part, but whatever. And now we play. Okay, so the game is not paused. Click, it is paused. On click, it's not paused. So that shows that goes to show the beauty of the observer pattern in games this will power up your game you don't have to link objects together you don't have to do the classic public i mean you can you will do it of course with less the okay. public static game state manager instance then you will not have to do this as much so you just use your event handler and send and request events you can have a player event handler uh tower card gameplay event handler, UI event handler. So that way you keep your handlers separated. Maybe this is all depending on your game. So I'm glad you guys watch this video. If you came up to the end, uh, this was streamed live in uh, Twitch.tv, Natural Power Games. If you want to join, follow the link in the description, blah, blah, blah. Subscribe and stuff. I don't know. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.